Summary in case Chi Nam B development study number hat B type Kim Chu and 4 ORS. Defendant is a property developer who offers cash housing unit at a price of RN297,000 without any additional payment. However, after the contract is signed between the plaintiff and the defendant, the defendant asks the plaintiff to pay an additional payment of RM4000 by force or not in the contract agreement. When the force payment issued by the defendant to the plaintiff causes the plaintiff to take action to cancel the booking or make a claim against the defendant for payment for the housing. Besides that, the defendant state that the plaintiff had to pay RM4000 in order to be able to buy a house for RM297000. This duty of the defendant is an agreement that has been promised under compulsion in section 15 of the contract which cannot be cancelled. In this case, the contract between the plaintiff and the defendant under the compulsion of section 15 contract is irrevocable. Therefore, the defendant must inform the plaintiff in advance that this contract is irrevocable. However, the plaintiff must pay RM4000 to the defendant. Further, in the settlement in this case, the court ruled that the plaintiff promised to pay an additional sum of RM4000 to make a house reservation could not be fulfilled because the promise was made under force and not voluntarily. In conclusion, if there is a purchase between the defendant and the plaintiff, the defendant must carefully explain the terms of the contract to the plaintiff so as not to cause misunderstanding or cause problems during the purchase process or after the purchase. This is because it involves an agreement between two parties. The parties involved in this case, the first one is Chin Nam B Development, Sendian Berhad, which is it is as the defendant, which is the housing development company. And the second one is Tai Kim Cho and for us as the plaintiff who purchase houses of to be constructed by the appellant. Now I will talk about the rights and the duty of related parties which is defendant and plaintiff. The right of plaintiff is that getting the actual housing price which stated in the agreement without paying an additional payment of certain amount stated by the defendant. What can plaintiff do? Plaintiff can actually cancel the booking or make a sue for the defendant because the plaintiff is threatened for additional payment with involuntary to pay. All the defendant's words must be taken into account so that the defendant can claim it to the court. The right of defendant is that in this case, the defendant is threatening the plaintiff to pay for additional cost in order to plaintiff to buy the house. Duty for the defendant is that this agreement has been stated under the coercion in section 15, avoidable contract. The defendant should have told the plaintiff sooner in the agreement about the additional cost without threatening and to avoid misunderstanding towards the plaintiff. The issue and problem that has been raised. The issue in this case is whether the contract entered between Bailey and Das is valid due to coercion as then. Of the Contract Act 1950 provide that all of the agreement are contracts if they are made by free consent of the contracting party. Therefore, in order to constitute a valid contract, there must be no force or influence from other person to enter into the contract. It must be done willingly and freely under S14. There is no free consent if a person enters into contract under coercion.
threatening at forbidden by penal code is one of the circumstances of coercion under S1 as the act involves threat to bodily injury and this can be done by word or conduct of a person. Therefore, if A feels threatened by the word or action of B, A can be to be under caution and B shall be liable for committing caution. Under S19, a contract entered due to caution is voidable and thus the victim has the right to resign or continue with the contract. In the case of Tsunami Development Center Berhad vs. Tai Kim Chu, the respondent purchased certain houses for construction for the price of 29700 from the African the respondent claimed that they had to pay additional sum of 4000 to the appellant under a treat where the appellant threatened to cancel the booking of the house if the sum was not paid. It was held by the court that there was caution by the appellant as the 4000 payment was done involuntarily, involuntarily and with no fee concern. In Belize's case, uh, plaintiff had sold the house to defendant for 55,000 ringgit whereas in fact the original price was, was 1,223,456 ringgit Malaysia. Plaintiff claimed that he was forced into, into the same contract. Looking at the facts of Belize's case, at the time of the contract, plaintiff was surrounded by defendant workers physically large and broad. Defendant's worker even carried parang and threatened to injure plaintiff. Based on S15, this act can be classified as coercion because plaintiff felt scared and threatened by the worker's word and conduct, which then forced plaintiff to enter to into contract with defendant, even though the plaintiff didn't want to. In conclusion, the contract between Valley and Tess is voidable due to coercion and Valley has the option to rescind and or continue the contract. The element of contract that involved in case Tinambi, Development Senriyam Bahad vs Tai Kim Cho and for us 1988 is caution. In this research, we have found that the element of caution is present in the case of Tinambi Development Senriyam Bahad vs Tai Kim Cho and for us 1989. The element of caution, caution is, is in the element of contract in the element of free consent. Concern is said to be free when it's not caused by one or more of the following of is proud, caution, undue, influence, misprestation, and mistake. But in this case, caution has found. Caution is that the use of force to influence someone to try to something that they are unwilling to do. However, in this case, the respondent enter in to uh, agree an agreement with the appellant to sale of house or property to be put by the appellant to the respondent worth RM 29,500. After that, the respondent is asked by the developer who will build the house to pay an addition sum of money amounting RM 4,000. If he fails to meet the development developer's claim, the appellant will be directed by developer to cancel the order of the developer house to build by them. The court has ruled, has ruled that this agreement is to pay an addition sum of money due, caution, due to caution in the sense of and consequently cannot be revoked at the option of respondent. Okay, next. I will share to you about the solution of this case. Okay, the lower court had found that payment was not voluntarily, that but had been made under threat. Thus, there was coercion in the agreement of paying the additional four thousand dollar to the defendant. The appeal was dismissed by the high court, which ruled that there was correct coercion as defined in section fifteen. It further added that the definition of Section 15 should only apply for the purpose contained in Section 14 and not for the entire Act. Um, court help, the plaintiffs promised to pay extra money for house booking is voidable since the promise made under coercion. <laughs>